I'm joining us welcome to my youtube channel um, i am a backyard gardener in zone 8a in north texas and um, today i kind of wanted to give you guys an updated tour um, a little bit has changed since my last one whenever i had all of the halloween decorations up um, so let's go ahead and get started okay so we're gonna start over here um, pretty much everything that's over here is going to be my cold, hardy crops. Um, everything is still alive and doing well. We just had two nights of freezing temperatures, and I know that for some of you, you guys have been looking at snow and ice and stuff for much longer than I have. Um, it's like 61 here <laughs> right now, but it got down to about 28 degrees Fahrenheit last night. So um, here I have two Romanesco plants, and there's if the Romanesco has started to form a head, it's very, very tiny. Um, I don't see it yet. Let's see if I can zoom in and maybe maybe we'll have something to look at. Ooh, sorry. Yeah, I don't see anything yet, um, but a little bit further down here. My cauliflowers are starting to form heads, and I have three of those. And they're looking nice and healthy beautiful. I'm going to try to get down there so you can see how cute. Look how cute that is. 
And here's the third one. They're starting to grow pretty fast. Just a couple of days ago, they were about the size of nickels, and now it looks like maybe quarters. Um, this is going to be purple cauliflower. It's a little bit behind its white cauliflower cousins there. These are purple cabbages. Hold on, I'm so sorry. I have it on manual focus today so that I can zoom in and out as needed. This one looks like maybe it's going to start forming a head. So that's super exciting. These are Colibos cabbages. Um, I've never grown any fall crops before in my life, so I'm really excited to see how that turns out. Um, I have a few lettuces under here. This is to keep the squirrels out because they dig in everything. I have a few lettuces. There's more in there growing, but I covered it in leaf mulch to keep the, <laughs> the mildly cold temperatures from affecting them. Here's some joker lettuce that's doing pretty well. Um, I just watered out here just to give these guys a little bit of a, a boost. Uh, that is calendula, and I'm not sure if that's going to be coffee and cream calendula or just regular. Uh, I'm not sure if we're going to get it to bloom yet this season or not. Some rainbow chard here. I've been cut, pulling the leaves off whenever they're about this size and sauteing them up to eat with like eggs and kale and stuff and it's so good. Japanese red mustard and it's still a wee baby. There's several in here about this size underneath the leaf mulch. Um, this was how I was insulating <laughs> my plants. We had an abundance of leaves so hey, reuse right? Um, these are the Indian radishes that I got from my friends at Desert Dwelling. And then these are the Chinese fruit radishes that I got from them as well. And they're really starting to grow uh, under the leaf mulch, of course. Then here I have some carrots, I believe. These are dragon carrots and possibly kaleidoscope carrots. But I did not write the variety on the label because I suck at life. But carrots for sure. And they're doing really, really well. I actually planted these whenever it was way too hot outside still and I got them to sprout by watering them with ice. <laughs> it worked and they're doing really well so hopefully soon we'll have some carrots to eat from that. And then these three are the garlic bulbs that I planted back in October. These are all hardneck varieties um, and I have a video on that on my channel as well if you want to check out how to plant and or grow garlic. These are all doing really well. Um, the cold temps aren't really going to bother them too much, but I insulated them with the leaf mulch anyway. This was collard greens. I harvested it so that I could cook it, but I have plenty more growing all over the place. So um, no worries there. Here I have some Merlot lettuce. I've just been picking the leaves as kind of baby leaves and putting them on salads and stuff. And then here's some of the collard greens growing. Those are pretty cold hardy as well, so um, the 28 degree temps were nothing for them. This is purple sprouting broccoli. These actually need the cold temps in order to actually form the, the sprouting broccoli. So um, by spring, I should have something to harvest off of these. I'm gonna have arugula, and as you can see, I just cut the leaves off as I need them for salads and stuff. And I saute that up as well whenever I make eggs. These are um, dino kales, and they got a bit of a late start, so they're a little bit small, but it looks like they survived the freezing temps pretty well. And the river snake is to keep squirrels out. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Let's go over here to my raised bed and see what's going on. Woo! There we go. Okay, so here. I have the purple magnolia sweet peas and I was really worried that the frost was going to damage them but they look they look okay um, the blooms look like the blooms look like they survived pretty well sorry that was super blurry so yeah these look okay I can actually probably harvest a couple more peas off of here um, I harvested some on Saturday, trying to prepare for um, the incoming cold temps. Here is 
um, two carrots. That's all that survived in this bunch. An army worm got in and took out the rest. So I have one dragon carrot and one kaleidoscope carrot. And I'm not sure what color the kaleidoscope carrot is because those are yellow, orange, white, kind of a, a broad spectrum. So that one will be a surprise, but um, this one here, no wait, this one here is the dragon carrot. And then I have some more collard greens. Um, I had a bit of a cabbage worm issue. I was coming out here picking them off as I found them and smushing them because they're little green satans, but um, they're still completely edible. I'll wash them really well before I feed them to humans. So here is, I think this is Marvel of Four Seasons lettuce. Uh, then I have some more Joker lettuce here and here. Looks like it did pretty well with the cold temps. So um, that's good. We really like the fresh greens for our salads. And then I have some um, blue curled scotch kale, if I can get that in focus for you. Here, I actually have three. And here, and here, and these here are just to hold this metal support up for the peas. Um, my little marigold did not make it through the frost, and that's okay. Um, you know, kind of one of those live and learn things. Here is some rainbow chard that I planted. I think I planted it in November, so it's it's still kind of small, but it's starting to grow. Um, and like I said, we like to saute that up with other leafy greens, onions, garlic, jalapeno, or some other, you know, pepper with a little bit of zip, um, and salt and pepper, and then just throw a couple of eggs on top of it and fry them to like the over easy point, and it's so good. Uh, these are Danvers and Amarillo carrots, so these will just be orange and yellow. This is um, mini Tum Tum lettuce, and it survived the cold snap pretty decently. I have some Bloomsdale spinach here, and it's really starting, it was really tiny, but it looks like it's finally starting to grow. Some more arugula here, some more Bloomsdale spinach there. Um, we really like leafy greens in this house. So then here's another look at the peas. That one doesn't look like it survived very well. It looks a little yuck. The rest of these look okay, I think. Those look frost damaged or bug damaged or something. But these look okay. Mm, maybe the frost got this after all. What do you guys think? I think maybe frost damage. Um, if you guys remember my Halloween tour, the skeleton guy. These vines are twisted around all of the feet of the skeleton, so they're still just hanging out <laughs> until <laughs> until um, the plants die off so that I can remove it. And then we have our gigantic rosemary shrubs. This is an evergreen, so um, this is actually two shrubs. It's about, they are about oh, 12 years old, I would say, um, and they're evergreens. They did have some little blooms on them right here, but it looks like they're starting to die off or shrivel up or something. And then we get to the ugly side where all of the pretty spring and summer things were. Um, there's not very much left that's alive. We have one jasmine plant. I actually expected this to have some frost damage, but it seems to have done okay. Um, I'm going to give it a new home next spring try to give it something to kind of climb up and bloom really well. I had some zinnias here, but as you can see, the frost said, ha ha ha, your life is over. Um, I had some lemongrass here. I cut it all down Saturday, and I'm dehydrating it inside right now. I also have some, and some oil to use for some skincare, and I'm also making a uh, tincture for kind of fever reducer and like women's health. Uh, that's some more lettuce stuff growing. It survived the cold, the mildly cold temperatures. This also has some lettuce in it right here. I think that's like a, a type of romaine. Sorry. Romaine right here. And 
my poor green NB zinnia. I'm probably not even going to be able to save those seeds because it froze before they made it to their seeding point. Some more lemongrass. I did put leaf mulch on these just to protect the roots in hopes that um, in the springtime they'll come back and grow and flourish again. Uh, all of this was my star of the summer, my zinnias, and now it just looks poor and unfortunate. <laughs> there is some calendula growing down there. You can see the one lone green leaf poking out from the leaf mulch. So we'll see what happens with that. I don't think that I'm going to get to save any of these seeds either. Uh, do you guys know if you can save seeds from zinnias after the frost kind of kills them off? Just let me know in the comments if you do know, because I have no idea. Um, I thought this would freeze. I threw leaf mulch on top of it because I couldn't really get to the pot. Um, I thought this would freeze. I think it's coleopsis or something. It has really cute little uh, yellow daisy-like flowers. This one and that one, they're both still really green, so maybe they're a little bit more temperature hardy. This was my dwarf lantana, and it's done. Hopefully some seeds landed in the pot for next year. Um, some echinacea under here. It seems to have done okay. This is dill and parsley. And they're teeny tiny babies, as you can see. But um, they're usually cool, temperature hardy. Like the cilantro here, I'm really excited that I can still come out here and pick cilantro because I make salsa like three times a week. And this was my kid's favorite, the pineapple sage. Um, unfortunately, it did not last through the frost, but I was able to collect some seeds from it. So hopefully I'll be able to start new one, um, new ones or a new one next spring. These geraniums were absolutely beautiful up until <laughs> the cold weather last night. It actually, they actually made it through the first night of freezing temps, but they didn't survive last night because it got a couple of degrees colder. Um, so, so sad. I'm going to let them just completely finish dying and then I'll throw them behind my raised bed here where I put all my other dead plants so they can start decaying and then I transfer them into my compost bins. And now let's see how the greenhouse held up protecting protecting the plants. Um, I see one that probably is not going to make it, so I'm going to have to pick all of the tomatoes off of it. Everything else looks like it was protected fairly well. Um, the two that I was really worried about are this hibiscus. This is like a this is the red one. And the one in the corner here is the yellow one. There's no blooms on it right now. Um, there was a semi-bad aphid problem on them. So, and they were all just kind of like gathering on the blooms. So I was just snipping them off as I saw them covered in aphids and pitching them over the fence. Um, so really my main goal with the greenhouse was to keep my hibiscus alive because I don't want to have to replace them every year and they're not exactly cold temp hardy. Uh, these are tropical plants so you find them in places like Hawaii where it's 80 degrees year round. Um, it is significantly warmer in here than it is outside. Um, so I don't foresee any issues over the next few days with any other plants um, except for this tomato. Obviously it got a little bit too cold in here and I'm not really sure how cold it got because I don't have a thermometer yet and I don't have a heater so whatever heat was in here was whatever the sun created before sunset yesterday and whatever the plants gave off to themselves. I tried to fill it as full of plants as I could and um, it looks like the Mad Hatter peppers are okay. I have a couple more that I'm trying to get to they're full size. My husband likes to eat them on salad. So um, I have probably four or five on this plant and I'm trying to get to their full size. Then I have these Cheyenne peppers and what I'm doing with these is I'm growing them. They are kind of like cayennes. They're like a hybrid between a cayenne and something bigger. 
Um, so I'm growing them to their full size, letting them ripen, and then I dehydrate them and turn them into like a cayenne powder. It's it's relatively spicy. Um, definitely cleans out your sinuses. I joked with my best friend that it cures corona because you know your nose will just be just stu you know, stuff is coming out of your nose that you didn't even know was in there. Um, these are my dragon tongue beans. They have reached the ugly point in their life because these are the ones that I'm just letting dry up and um, go to seed or dry up so I can use them for seed actually and I actually collected a few the other day forgot them in my pocket found them later so that's what these ugly guys are doing in here and then I'll use these seeds next year and I have some other seeds that I'll share with friends so that we can all have fresh beans more Cheyenne peppers. This is a mystery house plant, we think. Um, it started growing and I just let it grow. It looks really cool. So I'm going to protect it in the greenhouse. The video the likes to cut off after a certain amount of time. So I started a kohlrabi here and here. And I have white in this bucket and purple in this bucket. And then I started some more kale. Um, as an experiment, I was trying to figure out if the raised bed, if the soil in there, needed to be amended because it seems kind of like heavy to me. So I started this one to see how fast this kale grows compared to the kale in there because that kale still seems kind of small to me. And I know that I didn't get a dwarf variety. So um, that's why I have that. I like experiments. I like to see what I can do. Um, then I have more peppers. Uh, this one, <laughs> this poor, my peppers are so ugly, you guys. You can tell it's the end of the season for them. This bell pepper. Okay, so I bought this plant from Lowe's probably in May. And I know, it's so tiny, right? Okay, so um, in May, we got like a torrential, torrential, torrential downpour. All my plants completely flooded. My tomatoes ended up getting um, that fungus on their leaves. I can't remember what it's called at the moment. <sighs> I'm going to think of it later. I know that I will. It'll be really random. Um, but I actually had to prune every single leaf off of this bell pepper, this poor sad jalapeno, and this Mad Hatter. Now, obviously, the Mad Hatter bounced back pretty well from its extreme pruning. Like, I'm telling you, every leaf was gone, and it was just like one stem sticking up and I kept babying these plants along and you know really nurturing them really trying to take care of them I didn't want to give up on them um, jalapeno we ended up getting probably 10 or 12 jalapenos off of the plant so um, that was okay the Mad Hatter we've gotten probably 25 peppers off um, so it's it did okay I never got a single bell pepper off of this but I read you know they don't really like hot temperatures they do better whenever it, the temperatures are milder so I kept it around I didn't want to give up on it and I finally got one lone bell pepper and it's so deformed and funky looking but I didn't want to give up on this plant and um, I still don't that's why it's in the greenhouse I didn't want it to freeze and then you know just give up on it so hopefully I can protect it enough to be able to harvest this one bell pepper, but let this ugly plant be a lesson to you. Don't give up on your plants and they won't give up on you. I provided for this plant and it's going to provide for me and that is awesome. Um, the sage, it actually looks a little bald because I harvested a whole bunch to cook Thanksgiving dinner. I hope all of you guys were able to eat a bunch of amazing food and that you had a great day, low stress. Um, I had lots of leftovers to eat throughout the weekend. I think I ate Thanksgiving food six times, maybe seven. I don't even know. It was delicious. Then I have a couple more Cheyenne plants here. And then another one here. This one seems to have the most left on it still. And there's a few that are starting to ripen. So I'll harvest those. Should be able to start dehydrating soon. This is my sad, sad jalapeno. Um, the last video that I showed you guys, the jalapenos, these guys were little nubbins. And I was like, I really hope that they're going to grow. And they've grown a little bit. Hopefully I can get 
a little bit more out of them before this plant completely gives up. It looks so sad. I did fertilize it recently. I think it got too cold in here for them because it did not look like this yesterday. Um, my herbs that I attempted to plant, I don't think are going to sprout. And that's okay. I have like a billion seeds. I'll just plant more in the spring whenever it starts to warm back up. Or whenever I get heat mats and grow lights out here. <laughs> uh, lemon thyme is looking pretty good. I think the thyme and the sage are pretty temperature hardy. So um, they should be okay even if I'm not able to keep it very warm in here. Um, these are my pepper seed experiments. I planted some jalapeno seeds in here. Once they get a little bigger, I will move them into individual containers. And then this is um, fish pepper seeds. I wanted to just see if I could get anything to grow out here in the winter. Um, I am going to get grow lights and heat mats um, before I do all my spring planting because there's going to be I don't, I'm a little embarrassed to say how many seeds there's going to be, but there's going to be seeds, <laughs> you know, all the way down. Um, lettuce that still never sprouted, and that's okay. I think that soil may be a little bit too heavy for a seed sprouting. But it looks like, other than the tomato and the one jalapeno plant, it looks like my weatherproofing that I did over the weekend um, helped a lot to keep... The greenhouse warm obviously whenever the sun comes in late in the day it really warms it up well so um, I'm really happy about that I do need to get a heater because it will get colder through December and January um, and into February so I need to figure out another way to add a little bit of warmth sorry I had to zoom myself out there I thought maybe it might be zooming in on my eyeball so um, yeah thank you guys so much for going on the tour of the garden with me. I know most of it's kind of ugly and scraggly and frost bitten, but um, I wanted to give you guys an update, at least on the fall crops, since that's what we have going on for the most part right now and probably through the winter. Um, our average low temperatures are about 15 to 19 degrees. So everything that I have planted for the fall, aside from the peas, should be okay with those temperatures um, and then if not hopefully we're able to harvest it before it gets that cold i haven't seen it that cold in a few years i think maybe like 21 was our low last year i haven't seen snow in probably three years and it was only like five minutes worth and it was just it was enough to make it a pain in the butt to drive home <laughs> but it wasn't anything pretty. Um, maybe like three or four flakes last year. I don't even remember anything worth saying, all right, we got some snow. Um, so I'm not really worried about the stuff here that we have growing, the garlic and the broccoli and the cauliflower and stuff. Um, the peas, I think I'm gonna go ahead and harvest those and probably pull them out within the next day or two. Um, but everything else is probably gonna be okay except for my flowers down there oh well, hopefully i have some more updates for you guys next time um i do have some more content ideas um to work on filming soon but i wanted to go ahead and get this tour out for you um i hope that you guys enjoyed watching today if you did um like subscribe comments all of that stuff that every youtube content creator tells you to do um, it helps us greatly and thank you guys so much for watching today and i hope you have a wonderful rest of the week bye